So we're supposed to leave for Jacob's appointment in about five minutes. And as you guys see, it is raining pretty hard and starting to flood now. Our street is starting to flood, guys. Hopefully it's not flooded when we get back. So we made it to the doctor's appointment, but the first half of that drive was really scary because it was pouring down rain. I wish you were there to drive us. Yeah, I'm glad it was I wasn't. It's, it's not bad over here on this side. I know. No. I actually had to put my sunglasses on when I got like halfway here. The worst part of it was for you finding a parking place, I think, over here on this side, no, right? the worst part of it. No, on this side. Oh, so. on this side, yeah. yes. <laughs> but my, like, I was gripping the steering wheel so tight and my knuckles were hurting because it was raining so hard. So we were a couple minutes late, but we made it safely. That's all that matters. And now Jacob's already in the back doing his testing. And I'm here for moral support. Are you? On the couch. Can you Not drive? napping today because I have to go back to work. Can you drive this back home? No, I gotta go, go back to, to the office. <laughs> of course, that kid's doing what he does best. Playing on my phone. Yep. Jacob's testing is finally over for the day. It took like an hour. Are you glad it's over? Yeah. Was it hard? Yeah. So he only has one more testing appointment and it's not this Friday but next and then the following Monday we meet with the doctor to go over all the results. So I'm really anxious to hear what he has to say. So today I told Xander that we need to get out here and work on the pitching mat a little bit and get him working on his uh, mechanics because he has a really good arm however like sometimes he just doesn't throw as hard as I think the only time that he throws as hard as he can like just actually throwing is when he's throwing from catcher to second base. All the rest of the times he, he kind of seems like he's short arming himself. So we're going to start working on his pitching form because he, he's watched Jacob pitch for so long. He understands what to do. However, I've noticed a couple of little small flaws in, the, in his pitching of him letting his glove side fly out and hit him in the back and, and not come down the mound and try to over, over pitch. So we're gonna do a little bit of work on that. I'm gonna work on his mechanics and uh, get him ready for the next time that they have practice, which should, their actual, uh, his WBA team, they're actually not gonna start practicing until uh, August. So this last time was so the main coach, the, the practice we just had this, this last week was his main coach wanted to see the skill level of all the kids and assess what we need on the team. Because I think we have seven or eight solid kids that are definitely gonna be on the team. And he needs to f see where he needs to try to find position players to fill. So we're going to work on his pitching so that when he gets up there next time, he, he's ready to show the coach what he can do. Well, actually, he didn't get a, he thing. didn't he didn't get a chance to show him this last time. Is, is the thing he he started out being the main catcher. He did the catching stuff, and then he went and did the other drills, and then it was time to hit. So he didn't get a chance to show what he can do pitching. So we're going to work on it so that he's ready to do it. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's start working on those mechanics, kid. All right. So what Xander's doing now is he's working from the stretch because his coach was teaching all the other kids to go from the stretch. So he's gonna go work from the stretch. He's coming back, his feet look good. His hands are in good position. All right, he's gonna do it again. He's just gonna keep working on this for a few times. Remember, we don't want those, we don't want your feet to be too close together when you come set either. That, that, I mean, like there can be a, like a three inch gap or so. You're there, see that right there would be good, that's set. You, you come from that to that, but look what you, yep, yep, see. You want, you want those feet to come back even. That's something that you'll just have to work on. There you go, that's good enough. Yep, that looks good. Let's, let's do one more of those. You're watching for the sign. Look, look, you're looking at your catcher. He's giving you a sign, okay. All right, that looks good, okay. So now what we're gonna work on is from that position right there, you're gonna bring your glove up like you're ready to pitch and you have to bring your knee at the same time. So start it again. Okay, glove and knee together. They both go up. There you go, Let's bring it back down. We're gonna do about 10 of those, dude. And try to hold it for you. That looks good. Okay, I like how you have a little bit of bend in your back leg as well. That looks good. That's good. But don't get too wobbly. That was that was a good, good rise. That was a, I know you are, but we, we're gonna work on, you mean you're used to the wind up? Yeah. I know. But you get a little wild in your wind-up too, so this is good for you. That's all right. You you still kind of twist it up a little bit, but that's okay. That's okay. I'm I'm not complaining. I'm just just pointing it out. That's good. Try not to be too wobbly on that leg. That leg's got to get strong, dude. If you're going to be a good pitcher, I'm going to let you work this way. That's good. Yep. Okay. Now hold it for three seconds, or hold it for five seconds. Oh, let's see how long you can hold it. That's what I want to do. Let's see how long you can hold it, okay? Come from the stretch, though. I want you to do those 
two the two things we were just doing. I need to wind up. Nope, no wind up. Let's do two from from the stretch. So two look down. Yeah, look. Yeah. You're gonna see how long you can do it. Yep. You're gonna start from the stretch though, and you're gonna look in at your catcher, get your sign, and do all do both of those phases. Okay, you got it. Hey, wait. So one thing I the one thing I'm gonna point out when you came back to get set, you twisted your body. I mean, you want to keep your body in line with this this line that we have drawn out here for you. It's, it'll help you get in the right 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 phase. There you go. No, oh, oh, what'd you do wrong? What'd you do wrong? <laughs> you knew it. <laughs> okay, you got your sign. Hold it. One, two, three. What? I wanted five seconds. <laughs> All right, come on, show me. Start from the stretch. Remember, don't put your foot on the rubber. You want it just to be touching against the rubber. There you go. You're looking at your sign. He's giving you 15 different signs. You liked it. Look up. And one, two, three, four. What's the five? No, I said five. Stretch out. There you go. Look for your sign. Got it. And one, two, three, four, five. Good job, I like it. That's some leg strength right there. All right, and then. That would've been a balk. Cause you kind of flinched a little bit while you were sitting still. That's a balk. That was better, except for you flew the hand out. All right, so let's see Xander work here now. So he's trying to work from the stretch. He's uh, He wants to work wind up, but I keep telling him we're working stretch right now. So he, he starts out in the stretch, he comes set, his leg and his glove and forward, and see, what he's doing is he's getting that leg kick over, but he's not quite getting his chest parallel to the ground, which is a big key to a, to a young pitcher uh, for their accuracy. See it again. So we work from the stretch. Glove looks good. No, that looks bad, dude. You didn't have chest down at all. You stood straight up, man. Remember that, remember that back leg? How we're talking about the back leg has to come up over? And then your chest is coming. You know what parallel is, right? Yeah. Okay, where they're on two even planes. Your chest is parallel with the ground, with the, with the, with the uh, mount. So you're coming down here. That was good. That was better. So that time he got his chest down. I mean, he still was kind of upright, but he's an eight-year-old. So that was that was much better than the one before that. Let's see it again. Okay. So work from the stretch. Looks in and gets a sign. Comes set. Gloves down. Glove goes up with the knee. Comes down the middle. It's all right. Could have done a little bit better on that one, but it was all right. Hey guys, welcome to Tuesday. We are melting in the car. It is so hot. It says it feels like 109 outside, and I believe it. We are on our way to the orthodontist, and I thought that there was a chance that Jacob was getting his braces taken off today because when we went six weeks ago, they said that he was getting pretty close and he needed to wear his rubber bands a little bit longer so that his um, overbite wasn't so bad. And so he's been wearing them pretty good, right? Yeah. And so I was hoping that today was the day but my best friend Hannah works there and she looked up the appointment and it's just to determine if he needs to wear the bands longer or if he's ready to get them taken off and if he is ready then they have to schedule another appointment I was like dang it I was really hoping today was the day but let's cross our fingers so we can schedule the appointment in a couple of weeks and he can be done with braces for good the Xander is not with us as you guys can see because he is at his friend's house. He would much rather hang out with his friend than go to the orthodontist with us. It takes two people to help this child. <laughs> his tongue is always biting. So the braces are not coming off today. We're gonna reevaluate in six weeks. He's gotta wear those rubber bands more. Open a little bit bigger. Open as big as you can, like you're eating a big old cheeseburger. I know your tongue is like biting so hard. <laughs> So we go back in seven weeks. Let me see where your bands are. They had to move the right side closer to the front. So hopefully it works. 
Are you ready to get them off? We saw two people in that short amount of time over there. Two people got their braces off today. Guess what today? Ah! <laughs> Guess what today is? I am not wearing that. Chick Fil A. Yes. I'm not wearing that. Who wants free Chick Fil A? I'm not wearing a cow. Yes, you are. I'm not asking you to wear a cow. It's as simple as putting pieces of black felt on a white T-shirt and walking in and getting free dinner. I don't have white T-shirt. I'm good. Yeah, you don't have a solid white one, but I already found you one that you can oh, use. Oh, no, can I, just, can I just take a whole look on paper and just uh, use a marker and just color on it? Why? What's the difference? Um, I don't have stuff like sticking to me. <laughs> it's okay, dude. It's worth it to get frayed Chick-fil-A. Yeah, marker's better. You can just color in black no. spots. No. Yes, you can't have to wait. No, because look, then you could just take these off and you don't ruin the shirt. Um. Booyah. I don't want a cow! Tough. Daisy, I think you might be able to get free Chick-fil-A. You kind of already look like a cow, black and white. Not saying you're, you're, I'm not saying you're fat, Daisy. I was not saying she's fat. Yeah, it's weird. She is not too. fat. Oh, hey, what's going on, guys? Are you ready to look like a cow? Yes! The answer is yes! <laughs> I can't wait! <laughs> now what I'm actually doing right now, then, is something even more important, okay? I'm going through all the names that wanted to enter the contest to win the fidget spinners. Nice. Because that's going up on the Wednesday video. So if you missed the Wednesday video, you might want to go back and see if you won if you if you had entered into the contest. <laughs> We're on our way to Chick-fil-A. At least this guy is not embarrassed. He said he wanted more spots on his shirt. He did not have enough. Are you willing to give up some of your spots? <laughs> hey, that free. Chicken sandwich. Like poking at me. Yeah, it's called a, um, a, a safety, uh, safety pin? pin. Yeah. Yeah, why don't you seal them? They are sealed. Well, something's poking at me. Wow. You're not going to be complaining when you eat that free sandwich or chicken nuggets. We'll see. So, can we go to the drive thru? Nope. Are you sure? Pretty sure. It's like, I mean, we're taking it back home to eat. Why? We always they eat stopped. there you every told, year. You told me we were. You said we were going to go back home to eat. I did not say you that. Did. I did not say Guys, that. Guys, she did tell me that. I did not. You and Jacob are party peepers. <laughs> cow Appreciation Day. Looking like a cow, guys? No. I will say that we only spent $7 and we couldn't have bought, like, went to the grocery store and bought a dinner for tonight. It would have fed us all for $7. Right. Exactly. So, yeah, I guess it was a good idea. Thank I, you. I'm going to have to remind him. I'm going to be like, never what, what you said. Yes. Last year they changed it up. And prior to that, it used to be whatever you ordered was free. And now it's only chicken is free, which makes sense. So, we all had, like, I had my gluten free chicken sandwich. Eric had a chicken sandwich. The boys had chicken nuggets. And then I ordered um, an extra fry for them to share and then a couple of drinks. And so, and obviously I had to pay for my gluten free buttons. So, but we only spent $7.30 in fed family of four. So that is awesome. Pretty good. And uh, we'll do it again I next guess next year. year I'll just give you a hard time again. But we did see, like some guy walked in with just a sign that said eat more chicken. So he was just holding the sign of the cash register and then obviously just put it down, you know, afterwards. Probably threw it in the trash can actually. <laughs> I like that idea. I'll be doing that one next yes. year. Yes. And so some people just bring in like a stuffed animal cow. You know, so it doesn't have to be. There was, like a, there was a family that brought in like a pizza box. It was like a Little Caesars pizza box. So they just kind of tore into pieces and like had a necklace, like a little ne like a tie on necklace that they just wrapped around their, their neck or whatever. And it was tied to the little piece of cardboard that was torn off of a pizza box right. that said eat more chicken. So yeah, it, it can be super simple and you get free food and it's totally worth it. We are back home from dinner. We all changed out of our cow costumes. And now the boys and I are riding our bikes to the pool because Jacob's ear is feeling much better so he can finally go swimming again and he's been dying to get in the pool. We made it to the pool and the best thing about being at the pool the last hour it's open is there's hardly anybody here. How many do you have? Six, right? Yeah. So you got to drop them and see if you can pick them all up in one breath. Okay. Ready? Drop them. Hold on. No, you just got. I that got was them. cheating because now they're all together. Okay, fine.
You still can't do it. Use two hands. You gotta use two hands. Now just drop them from right there so they spread out some. Okay, now do it. Oh, you missed one. No way, that's impossible. That's <laughs> why so I hit you in the face. <laughs> to get them? Okay, let's see if Jacob can do it. Huh? What, me, huh? Oh. Yeah, real quick. Okay, I got them. No, don't. Hey. Ready? You, hey, Jacob, you have to get them in one breath, okay? You gotta let them finish falling. Okay. Don't go. go yet, no. You can't go yet. Let them finish Wait, falling. Really? Okay, on your mark. Go. Get set, go. The hardest part is staying underwater and not floating up. <laughs> Did you do it? Good job. <laughs> you didn't almost die. You didn't quite get on your back that time, buddy. Bye.